This week, Keith and I struggled a little bit. I've had a heavy week at work, and Keith has had a short week trying to get the podcast ready to go out. We decided to focus in on our weekend together with our family. We explored some topics that were easy to talk about. We talked about some things that were more difficult, and I think we figured it out. Or maybe we didn't. (laughs) But nonetheless, we had a good conversation, like we always tend to do. Welcome back to In Residence. I'm Keith. And I'm Laura. Hey, Laura. Hey, Keith. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm sick. I noticed. I always say that the um, curse of a vocalist is that it always hits my vocal cords. Yeah. So (laughs) it's it is hanging on. I've had some laryngitis. I have been blaming all week a combination of a cold, as well as cheering my heart out at the Packers Chiefs game on Sunday night. You went to another Packers game? Sure did. Saw (laughs) T-Swift. Sort of. I saw her profile and her bun. (laughs) So that's how I'm doing. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm still a little cruddy. I still have a little bit of a cough here and there, and... I forget about it, and then all of a sudden it hits. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, so a little cruddy, but <laughs> I'm better better than you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was talking today at work, and, and I go, this is, I'm feeling, I'm sounding a lot better, and they're like, this is better. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was pretty rough the other day. It certainly was. Is anything else on your mind before we dive into something? I don't, I mean, I don't think so. I mean, I think this week, agreeing and determining what it was we're going to talk about and spend our time on has been a little more difficult because we haven't had as much time to chat and have informal conversations. Yeah. And I I feel like we've been busy and then looking for relaxation and that doesn't always lend itself to, it doesn't always lend itself to having the freedom to simply listen to like say a podcast or something that just gives me an idea you, you know what i mean right. and and i usually need i usually need to listen to something and then have some time to let it gestate in the back of my head and maybe a day later or something i find myself writing i'm like oh where'd that come from oh oh i was listening to this the other day you know if i i sometimes try to take notes when i'm listening to stuff if something catches my attention i'm like oh that was a really poignant point that person made or or something like that but i haven't really been doing that this week yeah it's just we had a short week again we did and and i will say for me at work this this week at work has also been very full i've been traveling a little bit for work we've had some things occur that have been pretty heavy um it's been a really hard semester and so i think some of the things that i'm typically excited to talk about or energized to talk about. I'm kind of tired. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so how do we re-energize or recalibrate? Like today, I kind of set aside today to be, I'm I'm doing laundry today. It's not necessarily filling my cup. If I actually felt like I was being lazy doing it, I felt like, oh, I should be doing some work. And then I heard myself say that and I was like, okay, or this is important work that needs to be done to keep us going, right? Right, right. And how about you lean into that and realize that maybe you're feeling like you should be doing something because in between the loads and while I'm folding, I was watching a show just for fun, to just to energize me, just to kind of lift my spirits. And it wasn't for anything except for I want to laugh or enjoy the story of what I'm watching. Okay, what were you watching? I was watching Shorzy again. <laughs> it's just, it, it is so funny. It's crass and it's a vulgar, but it just, it tickles my funny bone. <laughs> and I feel like I'm probably drawn to it a little bit because a lot of the humor is around hockey a little bit. And it's not even my experience playing hockey growing up, but I enough where i'm like oh that's so funny and part of me is like i'm so glad i didn't keep playing hockey (laughs) when i see how they're acting because i know it's coming a lot from lived experiences from the writers and the creator (laughs) (laughs) right right so anyway i I spent some time today doing that and then listening to a few podcasts here and there off and on but i guess what's coming up again is 
I was, I was doing work, but I was also letting it be almost like therapeutic a, a little bit. And I had trouble letting that happen. Mm. I'm, I'm, not, cause I'm bringing that up because I was like hearing you you're like, I'm tired. I'm worn <laughs> out. Yeah. And then what you, what you did say right before is like, like, yeah, we're having a little trouble. Like, well, what should we talk about? And, and it doesn't have to be, I think we get caught between talking about something like that might feel like have a heft to it. And like, cause we want to solve a problem. Right. And we want to provide value. And then, like you said, it's like, I feel like I just need to talk about something that's going to like lighten me up and, or something light that yeah. lights me up. Right. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. So where are we going? Well, I, I thought, so we spent the weekend in Green Bay again, prior to the Packers game. And I don't, I don't sit s- still well. And I was still actually feeling decent. I would say I was feeling decent on Saturday, right? When we had a full day, even Sunday, I was feeling okay. Yeah. I don't think, I think we thought like, oh, you got away with it. Yeah. Oh, I, I was it's maybe a little bringing, dr- it's that's a little dry out for me. <laughs> Wait, sorry, what? No, I talked I, over you. Re, re say what you said because I was talking over. No, you. I said I, I felt like I had escaped it and I had gotten away without having to have the sickness that fell on the house. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I don't sit still well, and so I wanted to do some things. Yeah, and you and child one and child two were kind of like, can't we just sit in the house? And I'm like. Come on. I don't know if it was necessarily mm-hmm. that. I mean, they're definitely like that. And I know I'm kind of like that. <laughs> kind of? No, I know. <laughs> I think I think what it is is your idea of stuff to do is sometimes we're a little skeptic of like why? Why would we want to do that? <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's not I'm not trying to say no all the time. It's just I'm not sure. If that's like what I want to do and okay, we're different, so, right? You like to move and I like to not be sedentary. Conserve <laughs> well, energy. Conserve energy. You like to move and I like to chillax, <laughs> let's say. <laughs> Fair enough. But I'm, I, I, I do see, I'm trying to lean into doing some stuff so that the relaxation isn't simply perpetuating inaction. I was trying to lean into what you wanted to do. Yeah. No. Well, and so we had had a little bit of a, I think you and I, I brought up several different things that we could do. So I went on the website, right? What what to do in Green Bay this weekend. The website? Or you searched that? It was like the city or the chamber or somebody. Okay. Somebody had, or the tourism, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But somebody had had a list of things that were going on, kind of a calendar. And so I, I walked through a whole bunch of different ideas and- we ended up deciding on two things. We had ideas. <laughs> Sorry, that's why I'm giggling. Like, we had ideas. You were listing off things to do. Yeah. And we're just, like, kind of shrugging our shoulders, like, oh. <laughs> like, that's what you have to deal with, right? Like, you're like, yes. <laughs> you're like, is this mic on? Like, I'm getting getting no response, people. <laughs> yes. And I'm, I'm just like, whatever. Like, let, let's do something. Well, and we had just been to Door County. Otherwise, I'd say, "Hey, let's go and like yeah, that was shop and go to like a little like." That was the one thing where I said, "I'm like, we just did that." I don't think either of those two want to sit in a car for a couple hour drive, you know, up and yeah. back, which to is, do something that they really don't want to do, which is understandable, yeah. right? What we ended up deciding upon and agreeing upon is that we are going to go to the holiday market. It's, it was like a German style winter market, right? Winter market yeah. with. Was it Krampus? Krampus I think, or Krampus or, or I don't Krampus, know. Krampus, I don't know. It had some somebody was dressed up in a, a wild outfit that looked like from the back it looked like somebody that was a, a trapper in the fur trade in the eighteen hundreds yeah. in the Fox River Valley. Yeah. <laughs> in my head. Yeah. <laughs> but then the face had like a, a really kind of wicked mask, like elongated features, and I think it had some horns, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, when it turned around, I was like, Oh, I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I think child two said, oh my. So so we decided to go to the holiday winter market and we decided to go in the evening to one of those. I've never been to where they put all the different holiday lights up and they create like tunnels out of them and little light displays and, you know, butterflies or you know, icicles or whatever it is. 
And so I've never been to one of those. And is that the gardens? Or that was at the botanical gardens. Yep. And I thought, I'm like, oh, that would be really pretty to do. And so then we have one thing that's kind of in the late morning, early, you know, early afternoon. Yeah. And one thing that's in the evening and space it out a little bit. Yeah. I thought, it, I thought it, that worked out well. Yeah. Because we had time to back at the house we were staying at to just, like you puzzled, right? Didn't you start uh, the puzzle? I think, yeah. I think yeah, I started we, the puzzle. We put some holiday movies on and started in the background. So I thought it was a good balance, by the way. Yeah, I, I did too. And so we were talking about the different things that we did. And I, I realized that the things that we were uh, doing uh, really were around creative things. And since I've had uh, a very heavy and busy, right? I think both of those things are true. Tiring. Tiring. Yeah. Uh, work environment right now. I really was looking for some relief in in exploring things that I enjoy. So I was looking for some relief in, can I engage in being creative? And not being creative necessarily, but creative adjacent. <laughs> so at the winter market, what I really appreciated, I love going to holiday markets because I like to see everybody's craft. I like to see the mittens people have made, the ornaments people have crafted, the uh, cupcakes that they baked and put together. I like to support local artists, the earrings that are out there, mm -hmm. you know, the carolers that were singing. That was cool. That was cool. And so I, I like I like the idea of being able to see what comes out of people's creativity and becomes something. So that's why I really like craft fairs, holiday markets, things like that, because I get to see people making a craft, right? Yeah, it kind of fuels you, right? It kind of fills you up. It like invigorates you or rejuvenates that creativity in you, right? right? And, I, and I also think, too, that the thing that I really love about creative work is that there's always a story behind why the person has become a crafter or a maker, or there's a story behind the thing that they are selling. Yeah. And so maybe I'll give you an example, which I know you hoped I was going to do. <laughs> right? Yep. Okay. One of the uh, booths, I think is what we would call them. They were like these cute little houses, right? Or yeah. shed spaces. They were, they were sponsored by different companies and built by whatever company. And I noticed that. <laughs> I would, I definitely had a lens of, I was looking at it almost from like an, a future event planner, like, like would go and do like homework or something. I was just, what? Was, yeah, really? it was weird. I'm like looking at you right now because that is not what I so expected I to hear. I noticed that each booth was sponsored. It had plaques on it from who was sponsoring this booth and built by this company. But I was like, oh, that's interesting. Of course said company that builds these is going to provide these because it's marketing for them. Right. And so if I needed a shed in my backyard and I saw this here because, you know, like, oh, that company, they, they build these. I need this for my lawnmower for the winter storage or something. Like I was thinking those were like the things going through my head or, you know, they had those uh, propane heaters, outdoor heaters that yeah. you can go stand around yeah. like the pole. I go to the market and I'm, you're thinking of like, oh, these crafts. I was like, I wonder whose job it is to walk around and make sure these are working and refill them and that they're functioning. <laughs> so that's where my head was at. Like, Such I don't, an operation brain. I don't, I, I don't know why though, because I, <laughs> it's just, that's where my head was <laughs> when we were there for some reason. Yeah. I was like, I was looking at it from like an operation or something. One of the booths that I went to, I was going to talk just a little bit about the story behind some of the things people create and sell. One of the booths had just a very eclectic combination of things. I was pulled in, there was a sweatshirt that had the state of Wisconsin silhouette, silhouette on it that was made out of these really cute forest mushrooms on the fabric that made the state. The pattern, right? The pattern. I was like, oh, that is so cute. I went in and child one came with us. He picked out a sweatshirt. I picked out a sweatshirt. Then I, I looked over to the left and I saw these really, really cute ornaments and they were little tiny acorns. And so it was a real acorn cap. 
that then had like a little bit of, it must have been like a, what's the fluff you put in stuffed animals? Oh, it's like poly something, isn't it? Polyfiber fill or it was, it was like the fluffy stuff, but then it was a little bit of fabric made the actual bottom of the acorn. Um, the bottom was like a little pin cushion almost. Oh. And they were to size. They were about the size of an acorn. So they weren't super big, but they were super cute. I noticed that I could get garland that had acorn caps and then these really cute little pin cushiony things that made the bottom part of the acorn. It was something unique that I hadn't seen before. And I flipped it over and on the back it said, these acorns were collected through my various walks and hikes in southern Wisconsin. I hope you enjoy this garland as much as I enjoyed making it. Something like that. And I sat there and I thought, I'm going to get this. <laughs> it's not what I came here for. But like I said, it was unique and it was made by somebody. Handmade. Handmade, right? As I was checking out, the person said, oh, I'm so glad you're getting this. The individual who makes this, she goes on walks with her grandchildren and gathers the acorn caps and her grandchildren sometimes go on walks without her and gather them because she's mostly homebound. And then she uses vintage fabrics to make the bottom part of the acorn. And so it really is a unique kind of mixed media thing. And so, so I'm really excited to figure out where to put that. But there is so much behind the story and the craft and the idea beyond I bought this at a Target and it's cute. Yeah. Well, like that story, it makes what it makes me think is there's a purpose behind this or somebody created a purpose to serve themselves better, to help them maybe move through something. And it's handmade, which you and I both appreciate. And like you said, I would rather support a, a like a small business or or somebody local if I'm going to buy something like that. And you like to decorate and you like to make things festive. So yeah, lean into that, right? Yeah, I do. So that was a fun little purchase, I thought. The other thing that I was excited that we bought was the cupcakes. I didn't know if I was going to get one. Did you? You did end up getting I, one? I got the cheesecake one. I think strawberry cheesecake or something, which I, cheesecake is like one of my favorite things ever. Oh, yeah. I always, I always asked you to make me cheesecake on my birthday for a long time. And now I'm kind of like, uh, probably don't need a whole chat because you would make the like the four inch tall food network recipe, like emerald, like fresh gosh, zested <laughs> citrus. Yeah. And it's hot so hot fudge with Oreos. It's like, so good. Decorating. But it's like so not something I need around. For a week, you always you're like, it's it's your birthday week, and I'm like, oh no, like we grew up different. <laughs> like, <laughs> I get like a birthday afternoon, and you're like, it's a birthday week, and I'm like, oh, I'm like, I, okay, maybe I should try to lean into that. <laughs> but yeah, the cupcakes that was were good. they were really really good. You're right. I didn't. I wasn't quite sure if we were going to get any by the first evening. The kids were gone. Four out of six of them were gone. Yeah, but I got to have half of the one that I wanted which was the carrot cake one, the salted caramel cream cheese something. So I kind of wanted to try that one, but. <laughs> I definitely ate it. I'm yeah. Sorry. No, no, that's good. Uh, Cause that was our, our wedding cake. It was our wedding cake. So I, when, when you were pointing through them, I'm like, Oh, is that carrot cake? Mm -hmm. And you're like, yep. And I'm like, Oh, maybe we'll split that later. <laughs> like, no kids got to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is good. And I was actually very, very impressed because I like to do, I like to bake. I like to make time to bake. I like to try new things that are a little fancier than what I used to do. And there's nothing wrong with, with using a box cake mix and then using like the tubs of frosting because you can definitely get the job done and enjoy it. I'm not judging that, but I love the futziness maybe. It's <laughs> the way to say it. Making cupcakes, making kind of fancy holiday things. So last year, I think I've talked about this on here briefly, but I decided I was going to learn how and be really good at making macarons. Right. Oh, they were good though. Yeah. The reason I'm bringing this up is because this little booth had tons of macarons. They had cake pops. They had um, what they labeled as the best cookies. They had these beautiful cupcakes that had the professional kind of like big frosting thing on the top. I, I guess I was just really impressed. 
at what they brought to the brought to the fair and we definitely enjoy them. I like that with like confections you lean into precision. Me? Yeah. It's kind of part of the point. Yeah. So that's really interesting and you really do them up, like cupcakes, the macarons. This is the time of year where I I get to see that part of you shine. The attention to detail, the but it's it comes from such a caring place of I'm making this so that others can enjoy it, but then I get to see the joy in you of creating it, and it's really interesting. And that's kind of where I come from when I'm trying to be so precise, is it's because I care so much, but I think that gets lost in the intensity that I feel when it's not quite right. <laughs> and I'm, tr- I've, I'm shifting that, right? I've been, yeah. I've been trying to shift that for months and years, and it's actually starting to come, but it is because like we've said before, or we've, we've pointed out like people don't always see your competitive side or your attention to detail because I, you make it look effortless a lot of the time. Uh huh. Thanks. (laughs) So it's just, it's interesting to see different, those different facets of, of your personality shine through. So, um, it's something I, I've, I haven't realized until now that I'm like, Oh, this is coming up. This is going to be interesting to see what Laura wants to do. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I have been thinking about it. I always do my standards, right? So your, your mom shared her sugar cookie recipe Mm -hmm. that has become a staple of something we do in Frost as a family. That's fun. That was fun last year too. Yeah. That really stood out last year because there was a lot of cookies. There was a lot. (laughs) We don't need as many, but. (laughs) No, I don't know if we need as many this year, but I remember, I think, I can't remember which, if it was child one or child two. I said, should I make a double recipe or not? And they're like, oh, yeah. Yeah. It was way too many. It was way too many. So many cookies. Yeah. But so sugar cookies, I always, one of my favorites is ginger snaps or gingerbread or something like that. So doing gingerbread. Did you do gingerbread last year? Yeah. A very small. Oh, now I remember. Yeah. There wasn't a lot. I have a recipe that's like soft, but not super soft. It's like a little toothy. So I was eating them like warm out of the oven (laughs) and you were like, get away from that. (laughs) Like, stop it. (laughs) I'm like, they're so good. Not for you right now. I kind of like to, I don't want to say take orders, but kind of see what are people looking forward to. So I'll probably ask child one and child two and you, if there's one kind of cookie, what is it that you'd want? And then I can put a little tray together. Now, I don't get as fancy and coordinated as other folks out there that are doing big cookie exchanges or bringing cookie tubs to every single person they know. I don't get that much into it. But I have some tried and true, really good recipes around the caramel corn with the puff corn, the saltine caramel crackers that have chocolate on them. Oh, that's good. Dangerous. Yep. No fail. One of the kids always requests my chocolate chip cookies, which I don't fully understand. I mean, you can't really go wrong with that. That's true. Oh, the peanut butter blossom cookies. That's another one I often will do. My dad likes those. But then the macarons, I have to determine... Do I want to try them this year or do I want to try something different and save those? Last year, I did. Too many. Oh, my goodness. Don't. Can I name the kinds? Getting flashbacks. No, yeah, but it was amazing. They were, good. they were really good. So I started playing with it around Thanksgiving. And I did a cranberry with like an orange cranberry filling. Those were really good. Very flavorful, actually. Yeah, very, very good. It was like a yeah, an orange zest and cranberry compote in there. So nice good. enunciation on that. Thank you. <laughs> and then I also did a hot cocoa one that had mini teeny marshmallows on it. Like the kind you get in the little Swiss Miss packs. I ordered a huge pack of just mini marshmallows off the internet. I did a Grinch one. Oh, no. Okay. So what was the flavor profile of that? Because it looked like it was very green and it had like the red hearts, right? Yeah. It's supposed to be like, you know. Like, the Grinch growing heart growing horse. But what was the sizes? Three, three sizes bigger. How, how do you not know? This? I don't know. We just watched it in Green Bay. Too. Did we? Child two and I did. Oh, yeah. Okay. What was the flavor of that one? It's just vanilla. Okay, that's yeah, what it was. Yeah. Just vanilla, and then my favorite. Do you remember? Was it the Nutella? No. Was it the um, little Debbie Christmas tree one? Yeah, because it tasted like zebra cakes. Yeah, because it had the, it that was in it. So good. I was like, you have to get these away from me. <laughs> this is 
not going to end well. <laughs> it was cool because I iced them and then I used icing to make them look like the Christmas tree zebra cakes. That was fun. What I will say, though, last year, I had more time and capacity. So I was in between organizations. Remember? Yeah. I mean, it's the second week of December already. I know. Almost. I know. Right? Like. I know. Or it is. <laughs> so I have to get focused and clear about what is it that I'm going to make. One thing that we talked about related to the market, and I thought this was interesting on our drive back from Green Bay, was that I was really excited about it. And I saw it as this creative wonderland that look at everyone demonstrating their craft and showing what it is that's coming from their head and their creativity and really leaning into the creative work that they are jazzed about. Yeah. When I talked about that, I thought it was really interesting, your perspective on it, Mm. because I didn't anticipate it. And the reason I didn't anticipate it is because you are a maker. Mm. You craft. I want to be a maker. (laughs) Oh, come on. You build guitars. I have built guitars. I'm looking at two guitars right now that you have built. Yes. Yes. I have built them. You have. I'm not actively building You knocked out um, a Maui hook for a nephew. I don't Mm. know if we've talked about that on here. I don't know if we have. He wanted... (laughs) So, okay. That was a couple years ago, right? Yeah. It was around the beginning of the pandemic, right? Probably the first... Going into the first Christmas, um, maybe. Right? Yeah. 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 So, my sister's child, too, loved Moana. Loved Maui and wanted a Maui hook. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for them online, and it was going to take forever to get here. They were super expensive. They didn't look that great, actually. So my question to you was, can you make something like this? And I said, yeah. So what, what did you do? I'll figure it out. So I went online and I searched how to make a Maui hook. And I was so delighted that somebody I've been following for many years created a template free to download and a video showing how they made it for one of their kids. Was that? Is the Wood Whisperer. Oh, the Wood Whisperer. Mark Spignolo, who is, I mean, he's been doing woodworking on YouTube, online, the Wood Whisperer Guild, all this really cool stuff that he does for years, like before I realized I could go on the internet and find this kind of stuff. So he had a downloadable thing and I'm like, oh great, this will save me time. I just printed out like five or six sheets, taped it together, cut it out and got a two by four and chopped it up and glued it together and sculpted out a hook. It was fun. Looking back now, there were constraints. I had to get it done. There was a deadline and it was for, you know, somebody I love, you know, somebody I care about and thinking of how much he's going to enjoy it and that we're going to get this to him. Like it's almost like the delivery by Christmas, you know, kind of like a Hallmark movie (laughs) title or something. You know, so I was like, I was in the garage with shop lights plugged in at night, like just chiseling away, grinding away, sawdust spewing in the mill. You know, it's cold because it was, it had to be December. I was probably doing it in December, like beginning of December and just getting it done. So it was, it was fun. And that's, yeah, I for, I kind of forget about that. That was that was a fun little little thing to do. You also you helped uh make like the wrap for like the the handle. Oh, I braided the twine. You braided twine and that, so that was fun. Like we kind of yeah. collaborated on that and stuff. And, we did. Yeah. yeah, my friendship bracelet days of being a camp counselor yeah. came through. I think it turned out really well. I think so too. I I'm, I'm sure I took some pictures of it. I'll try to find some. You were kind of like Klaus. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. That is a good movie. Is that on Netflix? Uh, I think it's a Netflix original or something. Yeah. Klaus. But yeah. So why did you bring that up? You brought up that I made a hook. Oh, because I'm a maker. Maker stuff. Okay. Because you weren't talking about yourself as a maker. And the thing is, I think. It, it's more of like. Well, you can I, make. I can make. But yeah. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> so can I ask. Okay. So I have. So many projects that I think I could engage in right now. Like, say I had tomorrow completely off. I, like, in my head, I'm like, I could make Christmas cookies. Yep. I could make macarons. Yep. I could, oh, um, I have, <laughs> okay, this might seem a little nerdy, but it is me. 
I could work with some of my felt kits. So I've sewn all of our stockings. So it's Bucilla, I think it's called Bucilla is this brand and they put together these stocking making kits. I'll be asking you how to spell that later for the, cap- for the captions. Oh, it's <laughs> no, you just tell me I'll later. Just tell you later. Okay. <laughs> Growing up, our stockings of my family, my mom sewed them, and they were these ones that were felt and layered with some stuffing in to kind of make the little characters pop out with lots of sequins and beads and were really, really cool looking. I remember you in the passenger seat for several seasons making those for our kids, like while we're driving back and forth from... From things you're like, I'm going to bring this with, and I'm like, cool, I'll drive. And you're <laughs> you're in the passenger seat making child one or child two's stocking. stocking. Yeah. yeah. So we have all of them. I think I did yours as a toy maker shop, and you're built like the Santa's building a guitar. I think you made like, that. Oh, though. I made the guitar because like, that wasn't part of hand. it. No, I. And you, I, yeah, oh, yeah, you're totally. so creative. I am. I love being creative. I have additional not stocking kits, but I have additional kits. So I have one where there's like a little gnome garland where i can do gnomes and maybe i could put it with my acorn garland yeah right okay. so you have lots of projects you could be doing so if i have you a lot of projects off. that i could be doing if i had the day off mm-hmm. if you have the day off are you drawn towards i want to do this project or are you drawn towards other things because you're a creative soul yeah so, oh i mean i'm drawn towards working on a project and it depends on if I have a day off and I don't feel like I have other obligations. That's the tricky part for me, which I think is is resistance presenting itself and preventing me from doing something because I tend to stall, right? Well, it's not even about stalling, but is there something that lights you up that you're just trying to find the time and space to do? If I had a day off where I didn't feel like I had other commitments, I would go into my workshop. Right now, I'm feeling like I would go in my workshop and I would start plotting through how to make another guitar. If we're talking about physically making something, the thing that is feeding that itch lately is editing the podcast, working on the podcast, shipping the podcast. And so there's this part of me that's yearning to create something that's with my hands right? We've talked about this before that there's something I can hold at the end of it. Whereas the podcast is something that I'm creating is something to witness, but I can't hold it in my hands. Do you know what I mean? Right. You know what I mean? If I had the, yeah, I've, I've really been thinking a lot more of like, how do I create the space with the addition? Cause I don't want to stop doing what we're doing here. In addition to how do I make the time to come down and do the next small step towards building an instrument instead of feeling the weight of there's because I know all the steps because I've done it. How do I not let that bog me down and and slow me down? That's, you know, um, or how do I not (laughs) do laundry all day? (laughs) Planning. (laughs) I need to be better at planning. And scheduling. And that's a way of, for me to take responsibility and, and accountability. It's not going to happen if unless I make it happen. So I'm going to say something. Don't be mean. I'm not going to be mean. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't I, know what you're going to say. What? <laughs> I want to see how this sits with you. Mm. Is there a world, I know, but is there a world where you could do laundry and work on a guitar knowing that the laundry may need to sit longer than you're comfortable in the washer before it gets to the dryer. That is the easy part. What's the hard part is there's literally laundry sitting in the dryer right now. And it's in the back of my head. How's that going for you? It's, it's, it's okay. Cause it's mostly your stuff. <laughs> it's, actually that's harder. Like you thinking of you having wrinkled clothes or if I, if I mess up and then you have to deal with it while you're trying to get to work that's not great oh you're so good to me yeah today was simply a laundry day because i knew if i that's why stuff's sitting up there right now is because i started to kind of come down here because i was like i'm not doing enough i need to come downstairs and do something and then i get pulled into stuff down here and i forget about what i was doing up there i'm multitasking kind of thing which i'm not great at which 
Most people aren't. No, and you've heard that. I can't even remember who said it, but multitasking is really not a thing. Exactly. You just simply task switch faster. Yeah. Which doesn't necessarily lead to the results. And that's and that's what I mean by planning is because I'm because I've realized that okay, how much time am I do I have, and am I using it efficiently? Which is what we talked about before, but also. I don't need to get so heady and think about this stuff. It's like, or simply go and do the next step on that project that you say you want to do. Anyway, I feel like I'm rambling in a world where I have a day off. I would like to play music or work on a guitar or a podcast. Uh, what, you know, anything that supports that work could be a video, like a short video or some type of graphic or something, you know, uh, if around the podcast, but I just wanted to check in with you because it's definitely different for me than you, right. Of like a day off for me, I go about it differently than you seize the day. (laughs) Like like if you looked up, seize the day in the dictionary, there should be a picture of Laura next to it. (laughs) (laughs) It's, it's, I'm really not exaggerating. It's, it's pretty inspiring. Uh, (laughs) well thank you i think yeah like i said i don't sit still well the thing that i'm thinking is that if i have a day where i don't have a plan or an agenda i'm really comfortable saying okay for one hour or two hours i'm going to focus here and then i'm going to shift there and then i'm going to throw if i need to throw laundry in or i need to go quickly mow the lawn i'll mow the lawn then i'll shower then i'll do this then I, so I, th- I feel like I have multiple, I feel, okay. So this is what I kind of feel like is a metaphor for me. I'm not just going through a piano piece where you have two things going at one time. The bass and treble clef, you mean? Correct. Okay. I feel more like a symphony score where I have multiple parts going at one time. Yeah, you, yeah, you are. Right? Yeah. So I have things going all at one time and they're just coming in in a coordinated way are they though i think they are but how often do i come along and be like i i switched that laundry for you or i grabbed the spatula and i'm now i'm doing the taco meat do you know what's funny though i don't think that the intervention was necessary oh you are holding your tongue right now you have so much you want to say right now but you're not going to oh i I, I would not be articulate enough, I believe. <laughs> to show up well in yeah. your counter yeah, argument? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not trying to counter anything. Mm-hmm. I was just, we definitely experience multiple things going on at once differently. Our timing is just a little different, right? When it comes to, like, say, when to break, like coming up to a stop sign or something, right? Like, our timing is just a little different. I'm a really bad backseat driver. That's why I always drive. I was going to say... Do we have different different tolerance for when we should start braking? I don't notice when you're in the car with me. It's because I'm always driving. Try to make it that way. Or if I'm driving, I just don't notice it. Oh, like what? Oh, I bet you do. You're the most patient person I've ever met, and I really appreciate that. <laughs> I try. Not always. Anyway. But I try. Okay, we're rambling a okay. whole bunch. The thing that we talked about on the way home. And do I dare read my note here? Go for it. Okay. So I, I was taking notes as we were driving and talking about creative work and about the winter market. Yeah. That's what is that's where this started. Yeah, the winter market. Oh and my gosh. I'm wait, gonna edit wait. so much of what we just talked Why? about. Why? <laughs> I think it's great. Ugh. Don't edit so much out. The thing that I wrote down and I thought I thought was interesting is that left to your own device, you would not have gone to the winter market. Probably not. And when we were at the winter market, you and, and the kiddos were around and child one and child two shopped with me some. At the same time, it felt like I had made you guys go mm-hmm. to the market, even though you and I had said, yeah, let's try that. Yeah. And that wasn't my intention to act that way or make you feel like I was that way. But that's how you felt. Right. And I don't I didn't think anyone intended to make me feel that way. But when I was going like little house to little house and the three of you were huddled under like a propane heater, one I knew you needed to get heat because both of them refused to wear their jackets. They were also small little booths, by the way. They were. 
they were. I was simply like, I'm just going to hang back because I can see whatever I yeah. want to see from here. But I thought what was interesting was this concept. And what I wrote down is that it makes Laura sad, but I don't know exactly why. What makes you sad? So the concept was you had talked about, you had been reading or listening to something where society has really shifted when you have a partnership with somebody, that that person now is not just your partner, mm. but they're your partner, they're your confidant, they're your friend, they're your coach, they're your everything. Right. And that in the past in society, or even past generations perhaps, that that individual, your partner, like you, for me and me for you, yep. wasn't necessarily designed or served as all those things. Yeah, there's more of a community, right? Right. Or, yeah, I brought that up. You did? Yes. And when you brought it up, I'm like, aw. Yeah. Like, it made me a little, and not sad, like, boohoo, but just, I don't know, like. But I brought it up because I was sensing that you were trying to express like, why weren't you also jazzed to be doing what I picked to do? And that made me think of, what, so what I'm feeling here is, I'm feeling pressure to be everything, everywhere for you, the way you want me to be. And not that I don't want to be that, <laughs> but it brought up the idea of that that article or whatever that 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 brought that up, which is an interesting thing of, oh, how how... How much that is to hold to be everything to somebody. And it was because of like our conversation we were having. And it wasn't and like many times in our conversation while we're driving home, I'm like, I am saying things not because I I completely agree with it, but it's what it's making me think about. <laughs> Just to be clear. But it is a lot to expect somebody to be all of the things. Right? You can understand how that might feel like a lot. Yeah. No, I can understand how it would be a lot. And at the same time, I don't know if it's, I don't know exactly what it is, if it's like hopeless romance or what. You also, you were also feeling, and I think you still feel that I was telling you I had a horrible time at the market. And I was, I think I repeatedly said like, I didn't have a bad time. It's just not exactly. I, what I said was, I feel like you, you would have had a better time with a group of girlfriends or a group of friends. Like I, I, I just, I simply wasn't in the same headspace to enjoy the market the way you were at the time that we were there. Yeah. That's what I was trying to I say. I do suppose that's true. Thinking about when my sister was here for Thanksgiving, right? She and my mom went shopping down at a couple local stores. Yeah. And we had a, a good time. I think we could have spent the entire day out shopping and doing different things. I definitely didn't feel like you and the kiddos could have spent all day shopping little booths at a winter market. No, and I don't, what I, I think what I was trying <laughs> to communicate is I'm like, is that reasonable for you to expect of me? And well, you, you, that's something hard for you to hear right there with no, that expression. So we should be recording these so people can see our, like, our grimaces or, or our like, oh. <laughs> no, well, I don't think I'm not reacting that way. Because I feel like you should be like, oh my gosh, Laura, I'm so excited. We're going to go to the winter market. I'm going to hold your purse. We're going to drink hot chocolate. And I then. I hold your purse all the time. I don't care about I holding know. your purse. No, no, no. But you're like, then we're going to drink hot chocolate. And then we're going to buy matching Christmas ornaments and you're take selfies it, with the carolers. You're making it sound like that's not what you wanted, but I think that's what you wanted. No. <laughs> I didn't necessarily want that. Yeah. I mean, if you wanted to do it, you do you. <laughs> I'd be down. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I do think there is something in between that and kind of what I felt. I felt a little rushed. I felt like there wasn't a whole lot of interest in what I was doing. And I thought, okay, I won't take a lot of time. I'll just hit the things that stand out to me. Mm -hmm. I won't peruse them all, you know? I don't want to put you out because this was the thing that I wanted to do, even though I thought we had made the decision to do it together. So what's so interesting about that is, so this is the first time you've said that out loud, even though we had a conversation on the drive home. Said what? 
that you felt rushed that oh, you felt I like I didn't want to be there? Well, I thought you didn't want to be there. And with both of the kiddos not wearing coats, even though it's winter, they're like tweens and teenager now. Right. Yeah. Which by the way, no wonder they have ear infections right now. Oh, now, now, yeah. yeah. Okay. Now it makes sense. I'm like, well, were they were wearing, weren't they wearing coats and hats? Well, at night they were, but maybe not at then. Yeah. No, they uh, weren't then. No. Of course. They were in, wearing hats. Yeah. So they what were. I was trying to say there real quick, real quick once. So you just said some things that you hadn't articulated before. And the whole car ride, when we're talking about this part, I was trying to say anything I'm saying, I'm not trying to communicate that I was having a bad time. And then I also brought up that while I was waiting for you in one of the little shops, little I mean, it was like a little sheds, right? There was a really cool display outside of one of them that had Christmas ornaments that were on a really thin, I'm pretty sure it was really thin, like quarter inch thick tree branch. They're about four to six inches around diameter, but they were a quarter inch thick and they were painted with, and what really saw to me was it was Alice in Wonderland images and so there was like the Cheshire cat and the caterpillar and, and some other things. But the one that really stood out was there is, and there was a teacup that had like a little chickadee on it with a top hat. And it was just really just kind of whimsical kind of thing. Like it looked like something that you would want to puzzle of a bunch of these images and that you would lo- enjoy. And so at the same time that I, I was saying some things that were making you feel like I was having a, a like not have enjoying myself, then I was like, but. I told you all about like me seeing like these whimsical ornaments where I'm like, my whole point isn't like, I wouldn't want to be there. It's that I think you maybe would have had more fun or wouldn't have felt as rushed. Now I realize you were feeling rushed or like I was having a bad time because you were like me patiently waiting for you to do what you wanted to do. You interpret me doing that as he doesn't want to be here, which I totally get because I wasn't actively participating in the experience the way that you were is kind of what i'm in what i'm getting <laughs> yeah yeah and maybe i felt a little al- i don't want to say alone because i wasn't alone but i felt a little i was definitely in a different headspace though yeah. like i wasn't in i wasn't in a shopping mood like no, I didn't, you were not i mean there was i mean there was even like a, a beard balm stall yeah. and a hot sauce one and i'm like oh it's too i'm like i don't want to ruin the rest of my day trying hot sauce from a vendor at an outdoor market <laughs> I'm like, things could go wrong for me. Like, I'm of the age where if I eat the wrong thing, things can go wrong. (laughs) Like, I was being kind of practical, I guess, which maybe maybe, uh, deflated some of the whimsy that you were maybe looking for. Yeah. I say whimsy a lot. I don't know. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah. And and I guess earlier I said, like, I I was really, I was kind of looking at it from a different perspective. Yeah. So... Anyway, where, where does that leave us? Like, where does that leave you? <laughs> I don't know if I know exactly where it leaves me, but I think maybe the one thing that I'm curious about is how do we, because traveling, we travel differently. <laughs> this is where we're going? We're going, we're going here? Well, we don't have to go here entirely. Let's, let's do it. Not, well, not entirely. <laughs> we're going to hold something behind the curtain, <laughs> but yeah, let's do it. Well, we, we travel differently. We experience travel differently. Correct. Yeah. So I I enjoy that adventure. I think we've talked about that. Yeah. I wrote a note down earlier that I just peeked at that is speaks to this, which is how do we explore? And that's part of the travel is the exploration that you crave, I think. And the way you and I explore, I think, is a little different. Okay. So do you want to talk a little bit about how do you explore? Well, what what it makes me think of is and and what I I think I I proposed this when we were driving home was you, like you looked up a website like for like the city commerce or whatever and like oh what's going on in Green Bay and I'm like I don't think of that I'm more of like what what is there for me to do in Green Bay like what what am I gonna do I'm more of oh there's a concert let's go to that let's schedule a trip around going to a concert or like we've done before when you've you've traveled for work and I'm like oh like that's a cheap way for me to tag along and and we can do something and we're like let's go to a hockey game or we're out somewhere let's let's go to a baseball game cuz you know the kids like going to baseball games and it's stuff like that but also part of me is like I'm I really enjoyed doing nothing on our trip 
most of Sunday until you went to the, the football game. Yeah. Just being and sitting next to you, we had something on kind of in the background that we weren't really paying attention to too much, but we kind of were sometimes. And having this, the openness, the space to not have to do anything sometimes because I get that decision fatigue, right? Right. So anyway, but like, I like going to museums when we're in, in different cities or I enjoyed going to the, the walking the gardens and doing the light thing and even the market, like, even though you think I didn't enjoy it, like it was fine. It was a good time. Like I, I feel bad that you felt bad for doing it. <laughs> no, I don't know if I felt bad. It's kind of like going shoe shopping for me. It was, oh. was where my head was that for that day. I th- Oh, there's, I'm not, I'm not, it's like going shoe shopping with somebody when you don't need any shoes is what I'm trying to say. Like, You're so practical. No, no, I'm, I'm just not saying that as a complete slight. I'm just saying like, I'm there with you yeah. and you, you find the shoes you need to find because you need shoes. I don't. So I'm not going to buy any. And so if I'm not going to buy any, why would I have somebody go find me a pair to try on? And why would I take off my shoes? Why would I, you know, anyway. You're just going to sit on the bench in the mall and, and like and watch Krampus? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been to a mall in a really long time. It's true. <laughs> Which is probably something that would be fun to do, to go people, people watch. Wait, what? Shopping drives me insane unless I have something I want to buy. That is true. Something I haven't experienced in a while. It might be interesting. Anyway, you were talking about we travel different or we experience travel different is what I was saying. Yeah. And I I will say from a travel standpoint, for me, I really do. It's that exploring, finding something new, finding something unique, doing something I haven't done before. That's kind of fun. Like we, we, one time we might've talked about this when we were in Texas. Yeah. And it was perfect because it fit around, I think. Did you have a conference? At a conference, yep. But we could also schedule it where there was a indie car race. Right. And then also we had enough time where we're like, well, what should we do while we're here? And we found the Cidercade, <laughs> right? That's right, the Cidercade. That yeah, was fun. Where they had hard cider. And with that, you you paid, what was it, like a little entry fee even? Or was it, it all just much. free? I, I think the games might have just been free. Could have been. But there was just like aisles of pinball machines and I mean, is hundreds too much to say i mean it was hundreds of games the hundreds of games maybe half of which were probably pinball machines yeah this is in dallas so this right? i'm just i'm bringing this yeah yeah uh, you know suburbs of dallas or whatever i'm bringing that up is that was an example of where we simply found something that sounded fun for both of us and we went and did it right you know and maybe what i keep trying to do is recreate that whimsy in you because I really enjoy and love what? That feels heavy. No. I'm trying to do this to you. <laughs> no. I just really enjoy and love hanging out with you when you don't have a care in the world and you're along for the ride and you're enjoying the ride. It's mm. just like magical for me. Ind- okay. So-, and so I might be trying to just constantly recreate that and maybe I feel like If you and I have agreed, like, yeah, let's go to the market together, then I'm going to get that same whimsy and play from you. So, you know, do you, what I just maybe realized, this is something for me to think about and work on, possibly. So, Texas, we were alone, Mm -hmm. you and I as a couple. Yeah. The winter market, we had the childs with. The child. And so, and I think we both kind of know this, but I've. I internalize their comfort <laughs> and how they're doing. I, I take it on, possibly. I'm wondering if that had something to do with it. If I was sensing, are they bored or are they okay? Or, you know, and I'm not trying to put that on them either. Like, I'm talking about oh. this is a me thing. Well, that's kind of interesting because I'm thinking about our anniversary weekend. Mm-hmm. And for the most part, you had a sense of play that whole weekend. Like, Stone Temple Pilots. Yeah, what yeah. the hell? Let's go. Fast yeah. Taco. Yeah, let's do it. Let's yeah. go to Door County. Let's find a Thor's hammer. You see, that, you see what right? I'm saying? So I guess the question is, how do you have that sense of play Because I have with this, them too? Because I have a sense of duty to them, right? Is what I'm thinking or something. Like sure. There's, there's something. I'm, I, I, literally, this is like an epiphany to me. 
safety food water right yeah mm. and and but then i i i think i almost i go past that and because i i read in, i read into things because i want everybody to be okay because then i can be okay <laughs> kind of thing <laughs> or i don't have to or maybe i you know but they're my kids right so obviously like i want to make sure they're okay um that's it so anyway there's something there i think that i need to work on I don't know if you need to work on it. Like it shouldn't be a burden. Well, that's the thing is is if I'm showing up in a way that's affecting you in a in a negative way, it feels like a negative way. It feels like I ruined your time at the market. <laughs> you didn't ruin my time. I mean, I will say Everybody in the comments tell tell us your if you think I ruined Laura's time at the market. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't think you ruined my time at the market. I'm a pretty independent stubborn soul that is like we decided we're doing this market you we decided <laughs> we did okay i said what things sound fun what things that i'm listing off that i want to do sound like you'll hey. bear with me <laughs> no, i'm kidding hey you all <laughs> shot down it. polar express at from the train museum that did not sound fun that sounded like I a chore. Sounded whimsical. no 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 that <laughs> the idea at the mm. headline of that sounded fun. Like, oh, we can ride a train. And that sounds fun. But when you started reading the details, it's like, oh, this sounds like we are going to be told where to be, when to be, and how to be <laughs> for three and a half to four hours. And I'm like, that sounds like not like fun, especially with a teenager and a tween <laughs> and me. <laughs> yes, that's fair. I guess what I'm just trying to say is... I'm a pretty independent, stubborn person. I'm like, you know what? We listed some things off. We picked two things. You said, let's do it. And I'm going to enjoy myself and have fun and try and engage them. And if they won't engage with me, which you you all did. Mm -hmm. I'm painting this picture like you all like sat in the corner with your arms crossed under like a propane heater. Like, why are we here? You didn't do that. No there, no, there just simply wasn't anything there that I wanted to buy. Yeah. And so I think I think the thing that's interesting, though, is just that conversation that goes back to that that expectation that you are my friend, my confidant, my coach, my partner. Mm -hmm. And like I said, like, I see you as all those things. And so to think of uncoupling all of that and like parsing it out. Makes me kind of sad. Yeah. And I'm not like you realize I wasn't bringing up anything to to d detach from any of that. No. But the idea of you're sad thinking of separating that. And so am I <laughs> a little bit, but also entertaining the idea of what does that look like? That's telling <laughs> and <laughs> interesting. <laughs> well, and I, I, so. I do think, though, because, don't get me wrong, I don't think you are my only friend. Right. Right? I don't think you are my only confidant. I have an executive coach. I have you. I have others that mentor me and guide me, right? Mm -hmm. So I know you're not 100% the only person in each of those buckets, but to not have you, and I feel like you playing a role in each of those spaces in some way makes our relationship stronger. Oh, I agree. I totally agree. I feel the need to be needed also and to be in those spaces. Like I just to be clear, like, <laughs> like I feel like when I say anything, that's an idea. You some like the idea of like, like how can, how can one person be everything to somebody? Like I'm not bringing that up because I don't want to be your everything. <laughs> it's, Aww. it's that if somebody's talking about it, there's probably a reason and it, maybe it leads me to some examination of why do I feel like I want to be everything to you? <laughs> and, and maybe that's why there was a, a disconnect uh, or, or you feeling like, well, why doesn't he want to be at the market? And it's not that I didn't want to be, it's just that I wasn't showing up the way you were expecting me to. And then it makes me think, well, maybe somebody else could have showed up the way you wanted and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I don't, know. I don't know if I get it, <laughs> to be honest. But it's interesting to think about. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just think about if it was like the 1950s, right? Okay. What? It would be. It would be different. Like you would be my partner. I would have only probably girlfriends, right? Like you wouldn't be my friend. You'd be my partner. Yep. Maybe. Okay. 
I mean, hopefully we'd be friends. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't be my coach because I wouldn't need anybody to help me. You would totally take care of the roast and get me my drink when I walked in the door, right? <laughs> I'm really good at oh following gosh. those social norms. Ugh. Nope. <laughs> actually, I'm I'm a pretty dang good cook. You no, you're a really good cook. I would actually probably that wasn't my point. No, but um, my point was that our roles are pretty much the exact opposite of a 1950s couple. Yes, right. So anyway, I just feel like that's not something that would work for us and i know that's not when what people are saying when they're they're thinking about these things right so i guess i'm maybe i've moved from being sad <laughs> i wrote down it's only been a week how uh, thank makes goodness. laura no. sad yeah you, that's i read know. that to you today and you're like oh i'm like oof i'm like i'm glad you didn't tell me that earlier or i'd be like just in a bad mood all week <laughs> but not like sad boohoo like sad like disappointed <laughs> Like, is that better? I don't know. What do you mean? No, I think I was just, I think I was more just sad. Sad as in like, what do you mean you can't be my everything? Again, let me rephrase. I wasn't saying that. Uh, no, I, I brought know. Up, I, I brought know. up an anecdote of something I heard that while we were talking and having a discussion, I'm like, mm. this is making me think of this thing I heard where there is this expectation on uh, on peop coupled people to be everything to each other, and that's not how it used to be. Yeah, I get you. <laughs> do you though? Oh no. No, I do. Okay, I get you. Yeah, I understand. Okay, so now we're at the time of the podcast that we talk about something that we are reading or listening to that we're really jazzed about. What have you been doing? I have been going down a rabbit hole on YouTube of a channel that I just found, The Charismatic Voice. It's a gal, I think her name's Elizabeth, and she is reacting and analyzing music, vocals in particular. She is an opera singer, and she definitely knows the voice, and she knows, you can tell she really knows her craft, and she knows all of these things that professional singers know <laughs> and seeing her react to music that i grew up with and she is just in the last couple of years or now seen like alice in chains stunt Pepper pilots metallica rage against the machine acdc a stevie ray vaughn i'm going to show you that video later seeing the joy on her face and how much she enjoys or is intrigued by this music that has intrigued me over the years. There's just something just, it just pulls me in and I'm just so taken with, with it. I'm leaning into music and it's something I've been intentionally lean into, which is getting myself back into a practice of enjoying and making music. Uh, I've been enjoying it. So I'll, I'll link to that obviously in the show notes. How about you, Laura? What have you been engaging with? Mine's going to be a little bit of a throwback. My adoration has increased for Dolly Parton. Mm. And there is just something about Dolly that she is authentic. She does her. She doesn't get deep into politics. She is just there to show up, make the world a better place, and lean into who she is unapologetically. So I absolutely have been fascinated and love Dolly Parton. I even have on my Christmas list a mug that says caffeine, 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 <laughs> like Jolene, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> so excited about that. I'm hoping somebody picks that one up and's like, yes. That's awesome. But what I'm going to say based on that, it all stemmed back to a podcast that was recommended to me by a colleague, Dolly Parton's America. This podcast is several years old at this point, but it is a fascinating podcast that really goes through the journey of Dolly growing up to how she became famous to how she holds herself and leans into who she is and she does her. And so I would recommend that podcast. It's been a couple of years probably since I listened to it. But again, after that Thanksgiving Dolly Parton performance, after everything I know about her and just how authentic and genuine she is about who she is, 
I had been leaning into Dolly Parton to the point where, like I said, I've got that coffee mug on my Christmas mm-hmm. wish list. I'm excited to see if it shows up under the tree, and I would recommend the podcast. Cool. Anything else? No, I think that's it. Right, let's wrap it up then. Sounds good. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.